Georgia Tech ready to do battle with the favorite to win it all. The running Rebs of Vegas in their white. Tap controlled by Georgia Tech. And that was Mackey who strongly went back after it. Number 32, one of the anonymous two. Mackey and Johnny McNeil down on the blocks. The wizard Anderson gives it up to the top. Oliver and Scott is for being tracked by Augman on the left side has not yet touched it. You see you. UNLV switching and Butler playing Kenny Anderson and Butler can play a man that far with a great foot movement. Anderson missing the game's first shot. Anderson Hunt takes a three and he is short. Anderson will track it down now. Here's Oliver. Rolls in the first field goal of the game and Georgia Tech jumps ahead. If people have never seen Kenny Anderson play that hit ahead pass is one of his real trademarks. You have got to get back on defense. Straight man to man. They go into Johnson, who sends it back, and Hunt goes to Augman with a beautiful pass and a tie for a second. I thought he was going to arch another three, but it was a fine pass. Anderson finds daylight in Oliver. Beautiful pass and a wraparound. Very uncharacteristic of UNLV not to get back on defense. Oh, no. Hunt was fouled. The roll on the field goal, and we're tied at four, and Anderson coming right back. Hunt has taken Anderson. That's the first assignment in the game. Dennis Scott is the man that Georgia Tech needs to get involved early in this game. They don't want him looking for that field goal late. They drop it into him now. You're going to work on the inside and draw the foul. Brandon's first personal. This is what has changed Dennis Scott from a player who could be guarded as a freshman when he only wanted to play in the perimeter. Now he takes you inside. And what he wants to do right away, I can see, he said, Augman, I don't think you're strong enough to handle me down on the blocks. So a smart move by Dennis Scott to take Augman inside and pick up the foul. Augman probably does have a quickness advantage out on the perimeter. In the tournament, Scott had hit 21 of 26 free throws, overall an 80% free throw shooter, just a little strong on that first one. We saw Todd Day in the first game with a great release on the jumper. You'll see the same thing from Scott. Good double team. They went to Anthony. They moved through Hunt. Open underneath is Augman and tapped in by Johnson, the man they're going to have trouble with in this game. Kenny Anderson got caught on the weak side. Look at that pass. He found Mackey in low, and he hits the field goal. Fans, we have not seen a passer like this on the college level in a long, long time. Coming inside is Augman, knocked away by Mackey. Now here comes Anderson. Now we got two on two. And this time Anthony has him. Off Oliver's hands and out of bounds for the turnover. Now you see Kenny Anderson looking down the sidelines. How does he see the whole floor? I mean, he knows where everybody is at every second. Great vision. Johnson's got McNeil down low, really using that wide body. Hunt's second three. Off the glass. Had to call it no, horse, right? No, no. In a game of horse, that one doesn't count. <laughs> but in basketball, it goes. That could build Anderson Hunt's confidence, and that would be a real key to the game. Coming off the dribble, changing hands, Kenny Anderson, the wizard from New York. Now he gets back to the other side of the floor and knocks the ball out of bounds. Here's what I'm talking about, Brent. That shot was designed to go directly in the basket. So Hunt was off, but he wasn't off. The player who's been impressive in the early going is Mackey. We all know about Anderson, but he's holding his own against Butler right down there on the low blocks. They get to Augman, though, and they're having a matchup problem with Stacy Augman in low, and it's 11 9 Las Vegas. And that's Dennis Scott's man, so he is having problems there. Straight man to man by UNLV. Georgia Tech will change up. Oliver, after the gamble fails, misses the shot. And Butler with that familiar yell as he yanks down a rebound. Augman runs the floor beautifully. Well, we pointed it out last week. There's nobody finishes the fast break like Augman does on the college level. Now it is Scott. Misfiring and foul underneath is going to be on Oliver. One of the things, if Augman's going to get involved low in the offense that much, Scott will be open down here at the other end. 
Exactly what the the old term Gussie hanging is exactly what Dennis Scott did on Stacy that time you want to go down and take two I'll go the other end and get three. Now the defensive specialist Carl Brown has checked in and Mackey is conferring over there with coach Crimmins and Bobby undoubtedly wants him to switch off on Ogman when he gets free down low and he's changing up Brown somewhat small is a terrific defensive player. And there's a three second violation. Now, now Brent this is the small team for Georgia Tech Dennis Scott now will play Butler and this puts Johnny McNeil stays right where he was and the team will be small Oliver will have to take Stacy Ogden. 13 9 the running rev break on top. Good McNeil screen. the screen. Scott in low and he traveled. We've got a timeout. High low post now. Butler and Johnson trying to work. Ogman rims out. Georgia Tech going hard. Had two men. Oliver down in the fourth. Quickly back up, and this is Brown. McNeil with a strong rebound there had a season high of 15 another great Fine pass. Scott down low and he's going to come up to that free throw line Butler down on the inside gets his first person Brent as opposed to the first game today the tempo much slower in this game which I really think at this point even though Georgia Tech's behind is much to their favor an Arkansas forced Temple forced Duke to have to go to the bench so far UNLV is not doing that. What may be the reason Jerry Tarkinian may say I don't want to put too much pressure because Kenny Anderson can beat my best and if he does they'll have three on one breaks. And Scott cool so far. Anthony dueling with Brown as he brings it up now for the Rebs getting it into Butler. Collision and a foul is going to be called on Anthony. Now that was just a little one on one confrontation between Anthony and Brown. Brown was trying to do the same thing to him down the other end. You can see that stepped out there. Not a wise move by Anthony. And Anthony is a tough young point guard for the Rebels who suffered a broken jaw and didn't miss a single game. Now UNLV goes to their zone defense now. And Dennis Scott will look to find a hole somewhere beyond the zone. Great steal. Ogman, three on one, they break out. Hunt gives it back to Ogman. And he'll come on up to the free throw line. Score it. And a chance to complete the three point play for number 32, member of the United States Olympic team, which lost to the Russians in Seoul, Korea, now will come to the line. We'll see the steal here and so far Oliver has not been sharp. Ogman just steals the ball and when he goes on the break everybody on his club knows what a great finisher Stacy is. That time he used the left hand but can use the right hand as well. An eight point UNLV lead in the early going and nine by Stacy Ogman who's doing it at both ends of the floor. He has shut down Scott from the field. And he's contributing offensively. McNeil will have to take the shot. McNeil has had a very, very fine NCAA tournament, scoring more than we give him credit for. Or Brown will get right up in there on Anthony. Tough defender. The three. Anthony's first field goal of the game. Each of the Reb starters has hit a field goal here in the early going. It's 21-12 UNLV showing everyone why they're the power team to be reckoned with. Back comes Scott and he nails his first three. Five for the game. I don't think that 1-3-1 zone and that amoeba zone is going to do much for Scott because he'll go down outside the extension of the zone and take that three pointer. Brown's first personal. Mackey returning. And Moses Scurry number 35 checking in for the first time for UNLV. Butler will sit down. Uh, 
Johnson. Beautiful step in move. So far, Georgia Tech has just not been able to stop them on the, their defensive end of the floor. Goes Scott again, looking for that corner. Augman realizes it. Augman so quick with that great reach. Jumps out of that zone on Scott. Now Dennis will run the baseline. Tried to get it inside, and Scurry was in the passing lane, but Scott gets it back. Now he'll come back down on Anthony. Tap back into the hands of Mackey. Smart play by Dennis Scott. 23-17. Strictly a game of offense. Neither team figuring out a way to shut down the opponent. Johnson missing. Scott coming out with the rebound. Gets it into Anderson's hands. Anderson will come right around Anthony. Gives it back to Scott. Well, when you need two points in a close game and you got Kenny Anderson bringing it down the floor, you're just about unstoppable if you get numbers in your favor. And it goes over. Anthony. And on the inside is where that personal is going to be called. That's Scurry who gets his first personal. So it was not Anthony. And now Georgia Tech will bring in Daryl Barnes, a 6'8 freshman, and see how he will hold up on the inside as Butler has returned and Johnson sits down and Vegas gets back in this zone. It's the amoeba defense. A little matching up out front. A one-celled animal that changes its shape to destroy the enemy. That's what Buzz Riddle told me was how the amoeba was named. Former great coach at Pittsburgh. Anderson, daylight, good shooter. It's a two-point game. Georgia Tech right back as they put up six straight points. And Anthony having some problems down here. Now Brown is the kind of guy just aggravates you because of his great tenacity on defense. Now Butler has it knocked away by Scott on the inside. And Barnes wraps it up. And the Ramblin' Wreck can tie it up. No, don't try to cut off Kenny Anderson with the dribble. You know what he does to people, Brent? They're so used to being able to guard a man one-on-one -on -one with the dribble. He demoralizes you when he puts the ball in his hands. Kenny Anderson played at Archbishop Malloy High School in New York City, and he was named all city as a freshman, even though he never started a game or played in the first quarter. And he went on to break Kareem Abdul Jabbar's, who, of course, was Lou Alcindor as a schoolboy in New York, and he broke his New York City scoring record. So we're looking at one of the young phenoms. Both teams shooting well, 69% for Tech, 67%. Sianovic, who had checked into the game, has the ball with Anthony, who had struggled early on, out of the game now. And Kenny strips him, and he'll come in for the layup to tie it. Oh, my, here we go. Well, Stacy Sianovic, son of a coach, would be smart to give up that ball when he's being played by a defender of that caliber. A yes, sir. Offensive foul on Sianovic. Backcourt problems for the Rebels. Sianovic is trying to do more than he's capable of at this stage in the game. But with Greg Anthony out of there, Anderson Hunt wanting to break long for the three-point shots, Sianovic is the only primary ball handler. Six team fouls on Vegas, only three on Georgia Tech here in the early going. Scott now wants his three from NBA range. Oh, he's got way it. beyond. That's a 26-footer. Now Sianovic under pressure from Brown. Georgia Tech up three. Anderson back quickly to help out on Sianovic. They're looking for the five. They don't get it into the hands of Butler. By pressing, they take the inside game completely away. Hunt will try it off the penetration. One Butler knocked out of bounds by Scott. Vegas ball. Jerry Tarkanian going to his bench early. Maybe he's saying, hey, this is going to be a long night. I'm going to use this bench, try to wear Georgia Tech down. But what he's not doing is creating the tempo in this game that would force Georgia Tech to have to go to their bench. UNLV in this tournament, I believe, has never been behind by more than four or five points. They're down three, and Anthony comes back in. Sianovich sits down. Anthony will take the ball out of bounds. Augman Johnson has returned. So the starting five for the Rebels back on the floor. And Georgia Tech playing with a little more confidence right now on the floor. They've got the lob to Butler on a swing. He's a little bit too big on the lob for Dennis Scott. 
Johnson, who's taken his game outside, hits a three-point shot. I thought somebody said he couldn't hit from the perimeter. Bobby Crimmins giving Anderson a break. Brown a good ball handler as well. Got inside a hunt. And hit the layup. 28-26, Georgia Tech. Brent, those are big baskets. When you bring a guy off the bench that is not going to be a scorer, and he picks up two for you. And then the turnover, and now Tech ball again with a two-point lead. So it looks like Bobby Crimmins is going to go to about an eight-man rotation here. And using, getting a lot of quality minutes out of Brown. Bounce to Oliver inside of Anthony. And Butler away with the rebound. Long pass to Johnson. Count it. Layup. And he drew the foul from Mackey instead, so he'll come to the free throw line. Pretty good foul by Mackey because Johnson down in low. He just cannot be contained. So strong. Look at the great hands he has. And not to walk on that play. Came to the good jump stop. Larry Johnson. The junior college player of the year. Jerry Tarkanian himself was a JC player before he transferred, so he has always used a lot of them as Barry Young reports into the lineup. And Brett, Johnson's out of Tyler, Texas. And I want you to take a look at this young man because he's built a little bit like one Lawrence Taylor. And he was an amateur boxer as a young man for five years. And I said, were you any good? And he said, I was a killer. <laughs> but we can't find any tapes. There's no evidence, I, folks. I, I just passed that along. I, I don't know. Well, I would say this. If there's any home movies in yeah, Tyler, yeah. Texas, send it up to our producer, Bob Dickens. That's right. Tied at 28 now, 944 here in the first half. Back to the man-to-man, -man, which seems to be a better situation for Jerry Tarkanian's club keeps Dennis Scott Oliver with a beautiful spinning move for the layout. Now it's Hunt's turn. Tied, and now we're starting to warm to the task. Brown back for the Tech. Scott will come outside with a three. Thirty-three, thirty. Now nine, fourteen. Georgia Tech leads it. Butler knocked away beautifully on the inside. Second time Scott stolen the ball on the way up. Oliver has it knocked out of bounds by Johnson. Georgia Tech ball. Johnny McNeil back for the engineers and both teams shooting well as Kenny Anderson comes back. 74% for Georgia Tech and 71 for UNLV. Bobby Crimmins establishing his rotation now. Anderson realizing with Scott out, he's got to score more. I want to stress again the pace of the game favoring Georgia Tech because at this altitude, you don't want to get into a helter-skelter up and down with a light bench as the pass was into McNeil, and he traveled. It's going to go over to UNLV. Turn it over. Good idea by McNeil. However, he thought he had Larry Johnson going up in the air. Step away now, shot. Well, let me ask you, have we got great shooting out here, or can't anybody play any defense? I, I think we have great offensive performance here that are tough to, tough to guard. Anderson comes inside and almost got it to fall. Long pass, Brown there with Hunt. The duel on the sideline, one by Hunt. They go to trap him in the corner. They got him Five seconds. up over there. Yes, sir. Georgia Tech ball. Great defense. And Bobby Crimmins goes back with his initial starting lineup. Still playing man to man. Johnson wants it on the inside. McNeil leaning on him, doing a good job now as he comes free. They force Johnson to the outside much of the game. Anthony, nice play. Sensational play. With the Rebs up by a point. 
Anthony's kind of relegated himself to a different role than he uh, anticipated playing when he came to UNLV, but he can score. Mackey wants it down on the inside of this zone. Anderson comes inside. They closed in on him, and he just put it on the floor and burned him. And Brent, he was looking to pass on that play and just stood up there and said, okay, you're going to let me have the shot. I'll take it. Butler off the fake. McNeil rebounding, and here's Anderson again. He can see the whole floor. You know, the great ones like Wayne Gretzky and every other athlete, they just seem to see things that mere mortals don't. Oliver drawing the foul from Butler, and that is the second now on Butler. The other thing I think is interesting about these three great scores that Georgia Tech has, they don't force the play. They let the scoring come to them. Only one team has held all three below 20 in the same game. That was Virginia in the ACC championship that they played, but they're very patient with their offense. Seven team fouls now on UNLV. So Georgia Tech shooting the one and one the rest of the way, and Ramblin' Wreck with a couple of fouls to give here. Brian Oliver, a player who had never played in a winning game in the ACC tournament, this year ends up the MVP in the tournament. Did you say, Brent, about 212, 215 pounds? Rock solid. They go to some pressure, and they get it into Hunt's hands. The jump shot won't roll, and Ogman taps it back in. 11 points for Stacy Ogman in the first half. Oh. Wanted Mackey, and the pass was too high and out of bounds. It'll go to the Rebs on the turnover. One of the few times you see Kenny Anderson, though, pick up his dribble and get allow himself to be in the double team. It's not infallible. Leaning in, offensive foul. We're not giving McNeil enough credit for his low post defense. Even though Larry Johnson scored some points, McNeil's holding his own. Perhaps they didn't expect this. Well, and here again we see UNLV not pressing this Georgia Tech team because of the respect they have in their ball handling. Dennis Scott wanting one, but he's on the side here with Augman. He's not going to get his jumper on this side. Oliver spins inside. Into McNeil's hands. And that's where that 215 pounds of Oliver helped out because he shocked the pack, knocked the ball loose. Georgia Tech builds a three-point lead. Johnson loose Six. on the inside, makes it one. He's showing us some things in this game that we haven't seen out of him so far this year. Inside to Mackey. Now from the perimeter, it'll be Anderson. The three. On the money for Kenny Anderson. 11 points in the first half. A well-coached team. You notice how they made the, the clock was used up some as they surrounded that zone. Hunt's three is on the money. Beautiful Great pass to Scott, and he drew the foul. He'll come to the line again. And Jerry Tarkanian screaming to his team, get back. But you see, it's so tough. You're running back court. Anderson's coming up your back, and he makes those passes that you just don't see in a normal college game. And he goes back to that bench. He'll try James Jones for a while. The floor's our shooter, big fella. Bobby Crimmins over there with Oliver. And Brent, you know, with so much publicity that goes in the game, with UNLV being a favorite by a lot of people, including myself, as a matter of fact, I, I think that they're stunned a little bit with the quality of their opponent. Billy, is it fair to say they're not as focused as they were against Loyola Marymount in with, that regional final? Without question. I think they were a little bit nervous going into that game, saying, hey, is, maybe we can't stop this team. They have come out today, and, and they don't have that same intensity level. Continuing to play into Georgia Tech's hands. 
Not a real deep team over there, but getting the most out of everybody. 44-41, Tech with the lead inside of five minutes here, first half. Hunt will come back with a three. Long rebound in McNeil's hands. And Anderson runs the floor. There's now Scott. it's Scott. He'll take it out there. Is he phenomenal outside or what? Well, see, he's he's out beyond where the normal college defense plays, so Stacy Augman just couldn't get to him. That's his fourth three-pointer of this Final Four game. No shot. And Scott committing his first personal. Well, to put things in perspective as to what Dennis Scott has done, he has become the all-time single-season scoring leader in ACC history, taking away a record that stood all the way back since 1962 when one of my old teammates, Lenny Chappell, set it. So he's a special player on the offensive end. UNLV will now try Travis Bice. He missed practice yesterday. He's been ailing with a bit of the flu, and uh, Anderson Hunt sits down. Three-point shooting combined. Nine of 14, five of eight for Georgia Tech in this game. So both teams have been hot from the outside. Bice, too, has, has range. But Georgia Tech has built a six-point lead here. Now McNeil going out on Johnson a little higher. Johnson coming to the inside. Drew the foul, and he'll come up to the line. And now some words are being exchanged between Johnson and McNeil. And quickly, Paparo steps into the middle of that huddle, and there's a six-man huddle for you. They get Dickey in there, and he gives him the word. But what Johnson has been doing has been taking McNeil outside, but because McNeil may be better than anybody we've seen play Johnson in the low post is holding his ground there. He was voted in 1989 as USA Basketball's Athlete of the Year. Now that's some tribute to a fellow who had not even ever played one Division I game at that point. Buzzing around and trying himself. Forty-seven, forty-three, four eighteen, first half. And Oliver bangs down two more. The shooting has been phenomenal here in the first half of this Final Four game. And when Jerry Tarkanian goes to halftime, I guarantee you he's going to talk about getting back on defense and turning your head, not losing sight of the ball. Brown commits the personal, and Anthony will come up to the free throw line. Really interesting that the ACC has defeated all the number one seeds, and that's the three, and of course UNLV would make it the clean sweep. There's Connecticut, Michigan State, and Oklahoma. And there are the young men who will take the floor Monday night to play the winner of this game for the championship. The Duke Blue Devils who prevailed over Arkansas in game one. And if there's the most courageous player this year, there's Lindsey Howe sitting there. He's played his last game as a collegian. Remember when you talk about Greg Anthony didn't miss a game despite that broken jaw. Showed great leadership coming right back at practice. Wants a clear out. He wants part of Brown. Good hedge move that time by Scott. Now the officials have let him play a little bit more in this game, down on the inside blocks. That's a different kind of officiated game, and so McNeil's able to lean on Johnson down in there. Vice trying to get Butler involved. Anderson reaches behind it. Get it to Butler on the turnaround. That's his shot. David Butler was the nation's best junior college player two years ago, and that little fadeaway jumper is working very well for him. He's actually having more success in the low post than was Larry Johnson. Scott, short that time. Ogman off with the rebound. And Georgia Tech back on defense in a hurry, not giving them easy baskets. Butler again the turnaround, and Scott is fouled. That was Augman coming through, and that's his second personal here 
of the half. They've been over the limit for some time. Mackey and Johnson will return soon. Both coaches substituting much different than we saw in the first game. And Brent, I think the reason for that, the first game was so physical, a lot of body contact, everybody checking on every foul, I mean, on every shot that went up on the boards. And those teams wore down much more than these teams are. Let's check in on lethal weapon. What percentage of there? 80%. 18, 10, and 11. But let's not overlook the rest of this team. I, Billy, it's, you know, you told me that McNeil was a pretty good player. And, uh, he's been impressive here in the first half defensively. And so has Brown. Only has two points, but he's been doing the job making Greg Anthony really work. And here, a surprise, 51-46. This is the first time that UNLV has trailed by as many as five points in the entire NCAA tournament. Hunt Anthony and Ogman with a knee wrap. He took a bump to the knee, and that left knee now has a different wrap on it than when he started the game, and he's had some difficulty with his mobility in the last couple of minutes. There's Scott playing Johnson down low, and they just don't get him the ball. Mackey leaning away on Butler, and again they don't ship it on the inside. Now they get to him, and they play catch with Anthony. They need that shot to loosen things up, and they're not getting it. Anderson flips, and Oliver does get the handle, comes up, and Butler wraps it away out of bounds. Georgia Tech ball. Oh, another pass. It, you it you got to be aware all the time. There's the knee, the left knee, Stacy Ogman. Brett, the only person I've seen make the two-handed chess pass from as long a distance as accurately as Anderson does is Magic Johnson. That ball was thrown a good 35 feet right on the money. And now it goes over to Vegas. Johnson will have the ball out of bounds. They trail it by five, two minutes in the first half. Again, watch Dennis Scott and Johnson down in the low post. Scott trying to use that upper leg to hold him off. Into Johnson, who muscles his way in, is short that time. Anderson comes out now. UNLV back defensively. Kenny will pull it up and nail it himself. That's 13. 20 for Scott, 10 for Oliver. And he's also thrown five assists. Good double down by Brown on, on Johnson. Hoffman gets it to Butler and it's knocked away again. Third time Scott has stolen the ball on the jump shot. Off Hoffman's hands. Now, Larry Johnson and Dennis Scott did not cross half court that time. They stayed back. I think they're starting to feel it. The minute and 18 to go to halftime and neither coach wants to take the race out. But the officials rule it was not off Hoffman's hands. So it goes over to UNLV at 115. 53-46. Straight man to man, but dropping way back inside. Not there, and Scott with the rebound. Anderson Hunt and Greg Anthony are going to have to prove they can make some jump shots. They're back to the amoeba defense now. I think Jerry Tarkanian, Brent, has shown too much respect for Kenny Anderson. And they did not go out and press Georgia Tech, and therefore they didn't wear him down in his first half. Very well rested. Yes, sir. Dennis Scott within shooting range. <laughs> half court. Got about 16 Against the Duke students, he took the ball out to half court and said, I can make one here in practice and drilled it. One thing they could try in the second half is put Ogman on Anderson for a while. See what he could do with him. He's inside with time running out. <laughs> Pulled away by Ogman. 12 seconds. 53-46. UNLV behind. Hunt fires up a three. Had plenty of time to get a better shot than that, but you can see Larry Johnson now exhausted, as is Butler. Both just grasping for air. Billy, do you find UNLV playing a little out of desperation here? I really do. I, I, I think that this game has shocked them a little bit. You can see Larry Johnson just bending over, trying to grab his breath. That's the first half.
Good double downs by Georgia Tech, which is forcing Anderson Hunt to shoot from the outside. And he's not taken. Hartman, that time, both Anthony and Hunt passed up the outside shots. Now Hunt got his hand on the ball, forced the turnover. Here comes Ogman in on the inside. Missed it, yanked back away by the freshman Mackey. Good job by Mackey to stay still. Made Ogman commit. Scott with the ball, punches into the freshman. Vegas forces another turnover. Georgia Tech without a shot here in the second half. Now Hunt gets on the inside. Mackey with the ball, so UNLV had couple of scoring chances and they could not cash in on them. Oliver to McNeil. Unusual shot to take with nobody under the rebound. If you're Bobby Crimmins, you don't want that shot early on in the second half. It's loaded Johnson. And it's an offensive foul call. That's his second personal. You know, maybe the most valuable player so far, despite the fact that the trio is having a great game, is McNeil because he's playing and stopping Larry Johnson in the low post. Second time today, he drew the charge. Good rule looked, on verticality there by the officials. Jerry nice call. Looked, Jerry looked more like Lawrence of Arabia that time <laughs> than he did a man looking for a towel snack, didn't he? Here's Anderson now. Remember in the Loyola Marymount game, that towel never was used. He was always in, had great breathing room. And they were up 20 at the half. That's right. Won it by 30. Won it breezy. Anderson off this time. Good UNLV job. ball, 53-48 now. Anthony bringing it back down. Great hedge move on defense that last time by Larry Johnson. Butler wants it in low. They pass him up. Ogman with his regular knee wrap. That other one they put on is now off. The three from Anthony is on the money. 53-51. UNLV climbs back in a hurry. Anderson comes the distance. They put him on the free throw line. Brent, if you're going to play against Kenny Anderson, you cannot afford to turn your head and not see the ball at all times. That's what's happening to UNLV. When they run back down the court, they don't get their eye on the ball, and he just penetrates right on by him, either with the dribble or the pass. Moses Scurry into the game, and Johnson sits back down. Butler on the floor with three personal fouls right now, and Anderson stepping to the line. Now what this does, it puts a lot of pressure on Hunt to have to make some jump shots, because Scurry, you go from a, a, a great score down to a non-score. Fans thought that maybe Greg Anthony had fallen with the ball on the floor, but that wasn't the case. Scurry steps out high. Anthony. Good rebound by Oliver as he comes out. Spins past Anthony, who comes from the rear and can't catch him. Great play by Stacy Augman. Sensational defense. And it goes against Mackey, his second personal foul, as you take another look. Stacy got a piece of that ball because Oliver is a very good finisher himself on the break. Georgia Tech a little out of sync here in the second half. But Dennis Scott has not touched the ball. And I think the next time down the floor, Bobby Crimmins is going to make sure that Dennis handles it and gets some kind of shot off. Anthony bringing it up now for UNLV. They're down by three. This is a good defensive team on the floor now for Georgia Tech as far as matchup. Deep to Butler. Take it out right here. 40 and McNeil. Trying to deny him the ball, commits his second personal. Tarkanian strategy is pretty obvious. Try to pound the ball in a little bit lower than they did in the first half. Get away from some of that outside perimeter shooting game. I think if you're playing Butler at this time, you should play behind him, let him touch the ball, then double down on him, just like they did there. Through the foul, and he'll come up to that free throw line. Tarkanian starting to pace. He is not sitting back and relaxing and enjoying this one. This is not the kind of dogfight that the running Rebs expected here this afternoon. First team all conference in the Big West last year was the leading score and rebounding for UNLV. 
He'd hit 10 of 17 in the tournament. Brent has already had one national crown to his credit, San Jacinto in the National Junior College Championship. Now Anderson into the paint. Hunt off with the missed shot. They run him into an Ogman screen, but he comes back, knocks oh, the oh, oh. the Spurs hands, an opportunity basket for the running Rebs. They have outscored Georgia Tech 7-1 this half. They are back now to within one point. Well, if you're Georgia Tech here, you want to make sure that Dennis Scott touches the ball. He has not been involved offensively the entire second half. Ogman sticking with Scott. Down on the low blocks. Denying him the ball. Coming out now with Scott to the top. They're going to run on a screen, and Ogman on a switch, and Anderson comes the distance. Great Off defense. The Scurry. Great defensive set that time. Ogman has got Scott, and he's Hunt's not open. He's got the three, and UNLV moves to the lead. Timeout, Bobby Crimmins and Georgia Tech. Here's second national semifinal, 16-19 to go, 56-54. UNLV back in the lead. They've outscored Georgia Tech 10-1 this half. Georgia Tech held only one field goal over the last 750 of this game, going back to the first half. Ogman playing Scott head to head out here. All now. over him now. Denying him the ball. They cannot find their ace. So Anderson will take it himself, and Ogman reached in on him. He's doing it everybody defensively. Loose, picked up by Johnson. Bad pass. It's into the hands of Brown. He should get it back out. Now they find Scott on the perimeter, and he misses. Johnson with a rebound is fouled by Oliver. And Brent, what I think Georgia Tech is going to have to do now that Vegas has picked it up defensively, they're going to have to set solid screens for Dennis Scott to force the switch so that they can get Augment off him to get him started. That was his first shot in the first four minutes and 30 seconds of the second half, of which he has no points after scoring 20 in the first half. Now for the first time, that haunting cry of rebels, rebels. You can probably hear it all the way to the casinos in Las Vegas. Johnson's on the low block. McNeil rebounded. Oliver coming in. He'll come up and shoot a pair, and it would have been good had it gone. You know, when Kenny, when you watch Kenny Anderson's eyes as he's dribbling up the court, he's like a surgeon. You know, he's looking, where do I put the scalpel? You know, I, he, dissecting the floor and ready to make that move. But the key now is how do you free up Dennis Scott? Augmentation, did we say at the top of the show? That's what he's saying. Six fifty-five, a one-point Rebel lead. Fifteen twelve to go. Johnson again. This time they go to Anthony. Off the penetration. Yanked down strongly by Oliver. Some rebound for a guard. Tech 0 of 7 from the floor. Trying to get something going. Mackey finds Anderson working the baseline. He'll hit Scott. And it's going to go over. The foul is against Georgia Tech. Now how about Stacey Ogman? You talk about the nation's number one defender. He's guarding Scott, but that's the second time in the last three sequences down floor that he has been the man to come over and help out. That time, draw the charge. The answer to lethal weapon three is a man by the name of Stacey Ogman. Anderson with three personal fouls now for Georgia Tech. Butler can shoot the jumper from there. Back to Hunt. <laughs> Strong rebound by Johnson, who has it knocked away by Scott again, but into Butler's hands. And it'll be Ogman going after it. Again. And this time, Mackey wraps it up. 
and Oliver on the offense. It'll count. Brent, a lot of teams have two players of this magnitude offensively, but none have we seen in a long time in college basketball that have three. And here's what's so tough. This time it's Oliver. He made the power rebound on the other end of the floor, takes that body inside against Larry Johnson and fends him off for the layup. Johnson with three, Butler with three. With Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. 57 56, 13 59 to go, and Georgia Tech was ahead until Stacy Ogman took it outside, and now he's scored 16. He's the high man for the Rebs, and he has taken charge at both ends. Oliver, short. Ogman with a rebound. Seems like every five seconds, Billy he's everywhere. his name. He's everywhere. Butler, jump shot. The low block starting to wear down Georgia Tech. 61-57. Then what I think is wearing them down is the fact that they can't get their ace open to shoot because Stacy Augman's just got him blanketed. Away from the ball. And now, now that was a call. Augman and Scott with a couple of words there on the inside. Now Stacy does use some smart play with grabbing a guy around the waist and holding Dennis Scott but Dennis Scott has not been moving he's accepted the defensive pressure Moses Scurry replacing Johnson and McNeil back in Augman now joining Johnson and Butler all three playing with three fouls here Billy. And Kenny Anderson starting to bend over and grab those shorts uh, a sign of fatigue that we see so often on the college level. Good switch by Moses Scurry. Scott just cannot get his game going here in this half. Ogman denying him the ball. Now he gets it, backs in, muscle walks in and travels. Great defense again. They've got him frustrated. And Brent, the only way they're going to get Dennis Scott open is to set screens for him. He's not going to be able to post up down low. And you notice that Vegas has gone strictly man to man the second half. He got going when they went zone in the first half. Anthony. Over the back. Both Scurry and Butler going up, and it's going to be Butler who's going to be assessed his fourth personal, a big call in this game at the 12.30 mark. Little sidebar officiating right there. One official said, I've got the call. The other one jumping in on him, and a little teamwork. So Butler with eight points and eight rebounds will sit down, and Johnson with three personals. And remember, Ogman has three, so foul trouble starting to mount up on the Rebs. 61-57, UNLV leading it by four. Ogman just fights his way through Mackey's screen. The defense has held Tech to one of nine from the field this half. Goes against the Rebs. That's four on Scurry, Billy. When you start talking about percentage that the starters score, Georgia Tech's starters score 96% of the offense in the tournament. UNLV way down to 76%. So you can see how important it is for Bobby Crimmins to figure out a way to get Dennis Scott moving here. He just doesn't have points coming off that bench. 17 fouls against Las Vegas this half. Five on Georgia Tech. Scurry. Augman for the lob. Intercepted on a short pass and then knocked away from McNeil on the floor. The scramble. Scott wins it, but into Anthony's hands. Hunt's open. Boy, Moses Scurry is banging in there. Now it's Johnson's turn. Knocked away again. This time it is Oliver in the middle. Anthony and it's oh, away by Augman. 
Chapman. What a play defensively. Two on one. Johnson misses. And Scurry is wrapped up and fouled by Anderson. And that is number four on the freshman point guard. Brent, we are seeing one of the great defensive stands by an individual player, Stacy Ogman, just doing a sensational job. Last year's Defensive Player of the Year in the nation, and what a half he is playing now. The shot goes in, he makes the steal, gets the ball back, and starts the break. How about Lethal Weapon 3? Rather quiet. 43 in the first half, and this half only four as UNLV comes to play a little defense here in the second 20 minutes. And Jerry Tarkanian has junked the zone defense and really sticking them, showing no more respect like he did in that first half. On the inside, the block back into Johnson's hands, and he hits it. 15 for the game now. And it's 63 57. Billy, is this one getting away as Brown has come in to run the offense for Georgia Tech? Well, without Kenny Anderson in the game, obviously they have nobody to initiate the offense. That's not Oliver's role. They go back to the zone now with Kenny Anderson out of the game. Scott try to find himself a spot to take a three. He's over there with Scurry. Here it goes. There's his three. And starts to light it up here. Well, I don't know why Jerry Tarkinian would have gotten out of the man-to-man. -man. It was so effective, particularly with Kenny Anderson out of the game. He may be resting. It, Could though. be. He may be sitting back and gambling here. But in the meantime, it's down to a three-point lead. Now it's Johnson on the low blocks, missing. Mackey wraps it up. And if they can find Scott again, he can tie it. He's open over there on that wing. He wants it. He, he did. He wanted to bounce pass through the defenders. <laughs> and probably a good choice by Brown. By the time behind. they got it to him, Scurry had stepped up. Yep. Now he's going to go through. And Brown finds himself open, and so he hits it. And it's a one-point game. Valuable game by Brown off the bench. Here's a finisher. On back. I'll throw one out at you. How would you like to have Augman finishing and Kenny Anderson starting the break? <laughs> Is that some now that's a lethal weapon. Oliver coming around Johnson and Johnson fouled him. That's number four. And here's a good hit ahead by Greg Anthony. Stacy Ogman, who just looks over the defense and then takes that one rammed home. MVP of the Western Regional, certainly deserved it, and he's working on an MVP performance here. UNLV now with major foul problems on the inside. Johnson, Butler, and Scurry, four apiece. Ogman with three. Kenny Anderson out with four. So for the time being, it'll be Ogman, Scurry, and Butler with Johnson sitting down here at the 9.42 mark. So the Rebs are in foul trouble. One point, Vegas lead. They'll look to Butler inside. He puts it down. Oh. Oh. Earns his way up to that free throw line. He's a fearless competitor. Three on Mackey. Started out at Portland as a freshman. The WCAC was the freshman of the year in that league and then transferred back to his hometown where as a high school player he led his high school team to the state championship. Greg Anthony knows how to win. And without Kenny Anderson in the game, it'd be interesting to see if UNLV would try to press here. Not a bad idea. Nine twenty-three left in regulation. Back 
back to man-to-man. -man. They didn't stay in the zone long. McNeil's at the top. Butler. Ogman on the wing comes back on top hunt. Anthony bounces it into Scurry. Gets the roll. Now Brown quickly to the attack, and here's Oliver. Ah! Goaltending, put it down. That time Ogman was a little bit too good defensively. 17 for Oliver. He glided all the way across the lane. You can see him coming out of the side of your picture to get a piece of that. I thought it was a good block. Matter of fact, sensational block. I think it might have surprised the official. You can pin the ball on the board in the college game. I think it was sensational block. Yes, sir. 69-66, UNLV, 8.30. Augment. Magnificent performance. 20 points. Great job defensively on Dennis Scott. Doing it all here. 8-11. Now Scott, the three. He has to do a great job defensively to keep him under control. Ockman trying to break free and with his reach, knocked it out of bounds. Georgia Tech ball. They can tie it this trip. Give a little applause that time for Dennis Scott. Hit the three, realized Stacy Ockman took off to go in the other direction and hustled back down court on defense. Scott now has hit six three-pointers in this game. They would have counted if the Denver Nuggets had been playing here with Nichols. <laughs> no way. Get away. Missing that time into the hands of Skrull. Not a good shot. Hard to say that about Dennis Scott, though, I, but I know what you did. Stacy looking to drive again. He's gaining confidence on the offensive end. Anthony, the three. 74 69, 725 in regulation. Anthony with three three pointers. But I think it's time for Kenny Anderson to get back into this ball game. If you're Bobby Crimmins, you can't hold him much longer. Scurry rebounds the miss. Anthony has Butler. It's time for the timeout and Kenny Anderson in the lineup. And the expressions tell it all. Three timeouts apiece now, and the wizard is back. Kenny Anderson, who has struggled a little bit here in the second half with four personals on the floor. Georgia Tech down, 76-69, and Tech has been held to 31% this half. Entirely different than the first half, and Johnson has just picked up number five, and that could start to turn this around. Time to put some moisture on that towel, Jerry Tarkanian. Because now that inside game changes a lot. And although he's got Moses Scurry to put in, who my old buddy Al McGuire said makes it the best front line in college basketball, Scurry hasn't let him down so far today. Happened to be at the right place at the right time, and that errant pass, remember earlier on, Brent and a half, that really got UNLV on the roll. First team All American goes out. MVP of their tournament and regular season in the Big West. There has been some speculation, even though Johnson has said that he will return, that next year he will find himself in the NBA. At practice yesterday, I said, Larry, tell me, is the door closed? What are your feelings? He said, I always want to come to the Final Four. I'm here, and I really want to come back and play one more year at Las Vegas. So again, repeating that he does not intend to go to the NBA, but with the kind of dollars that are offered at the professional level, we know better than to shut that door, don't we? 6.50 to go now. 76-70. UNLV leading it by six. Brown still hustling out there. He's shown more stamina than any player on the court today in either game. Giving Ogman some room. 
Hunt trying to get Scurry back down on the inside. He'll punch into Butler. Off his hands on the turnover. It's Anderson bringing it back. Oh, what a pass. He's something. <laughs> It's about the only way to throw that ball is a soft bounce pass and he put it right on the money making it a four point game and Brown fouls Anthony his third personal foul. Brent another thing that Larry Johnson going out does it only allows Vegas to have one threat down on the inside so Bobby Crimmins can go with his smaller lineup Brown Anderson and Oliver and Scott to surround and makes for tough matchups for UNLV. We're at the six minute mark. I'll go back to that first game. Here's where Denny Crum told me in the, the great Houston Louisville game where he had the big lead. His players just wore out at altitude at Albuquerque. Here's Scott. Augman had rotated off of him to the inside, and he could not get that one to stay. And Scurry powerfully down on the turnover. Anderson will bring it back. Spinner. He's got it. <laughs> Fun to watch. Put it down. It's a two-point game now. 5-21. Here's Hunt. The three. Bingo. 79-74 now. 5-14 regulation. Go back to the top of the show. We talked about the hunter and the hunted. And you can't fault the backcourt from Vegas today in regard to what they've done offensively. Oliver penetrates beautifully. Ah. Wouldn't stay down. Scurry. With Johnson in foul trouble. It's been Scurry off the bench. Eight rebounds now. Anthony pounded it inside. Oh, got away with the travel. And then I think he hurt his knee. Yeah. Here is Hunt coming up with a jump shot. Ah. Tap back by Butler. Anderson leading the way. And Augman is there. Ogman stuck with him and he shipped it and there's a foul on Hunt. That's the first personal foul on Anderson Hunt. That was an interesting duel when Anderson brought it down and was face to face with Stacy Ogman. Great picture there. Stacy Og Ogman went over to Kenny Anderson. I think great mutual admiration between those two young men saying hey you're some defender and and I think that you see Stacy going out and, and probably a compliment and you're some ball player yourself. This uh, this fellow right here has been the story of the game. Scott scored 20 points in the first half and Augman held him to six so far in this half. 435 438 to go. 79 74. Scott not even free throws. It's like the invisible hand of Stacy Augman uh, yep. defending Scott at the free throw line. You, you know, if I was Dennis Scott, I would have followed Stacy Augman all the way over to the bench and say, Are you sure you're going out of the game? Because I want to get something going, son. <laughs> Sit here a while. Young has checked back in, number 33. Very young for UNLV. What's the elevation in, in Leicester, England? Because Brown doesn't seem to be getting tired at all. He was a soccer player. Oh, is that, that what was it is? his athletic background? That's going. The three again for Anderson Hunt. Number five. It's 82 74 at the four minute mark. And Anderson trying to get something going. And Hunt did a good job there that time. Oliver, beautiful inside move. Timeout is called by Cremens. Already Larry Johnson's out for the runner Rebs. Butler and Scurry for a piece and Anderson with four for Georgia Tech. Now Billy the clock says 355 to play. But those of us who grew up around the Big Ten know that whenever Georgia Tech plays there's at least 356 <laughs> 357. <laughs> and it's Judd, just kidding prize, folks huh? down in Atlanta. Just kidding. Anthony brings it back down now and he'll set the table here. It's 82 76. Hunt gets on the inside and the foul is going to be called against Brown who's on the floor. He thought he took the charge that time. That's his fourth personal. Well, Brent he just didn't get there in time. Excellent screening by Moses Scurry. You can see Carl Brown has played a tremendous game off the bench today. He's going to move these feet but he just doesn't get there in time. Wasn't planted. Hunt chips in 19 points and six assists and remember last Sunday at the regional final against Loyola Marymount he scored 30. Do you notice that black morning band 
on the Vegas uniforms. You saw it when he shot. You'll see it again as he gets ready here to shoot the second one. That is in honor of the late Hank Gathers. The great Loyola Marymount star who passed away so tragically back on March 4th and was a friend of many of the players around the country. Zach off with the missed free throw. 3.30 to go now, 83-76. Gotta be thinking threes. Ogman just won't let Scott touch it. And yet they're still not setting any screens for Scott to get Ogman away from him. See, there's a screen for Oliver to get him free, but they're not doing it for Scott. Scott has to try and get his own rebound. Brown digs it out. He comes inside with a driving layup, and Altman was there again defensively, and it's UNLV ball. Bobby Crimmins going to try to put some press on. By doing that, obviously, there's going to be a point of fatigue for his club, and then your shooting range really falls down. Did you ever see a picture quite like Jerry Tarkini? <laughs> He's sitting over there, holding his head, that pass it out, look at his. Scott has been held by Ogman to two of five, Billy, this half. And we're talking about straight man-to-man, -man too. It hasn't been double-teaming and helping. He just took him on as a challenge. UNLV using some clock now. Touch pass to Scurry. No foul, no blood, I guess. Not called that time. 85-76, 2.30. Now there's an opportunity. See, you set the screen, you can free him up. Which they did, and Scott buries the three. And that's his seventh of the game. 29 points, despite this subpar for him anyway. Second half, 85-79, but they're still dangerous with shooters like that at 210, and Johnson having fouled out of the game. Anderson Hunt making some very good decisions, not penetrating too far. Now it's Butler, swing to Scurry, and he hammered it too hard. Laid it off the glass. Ogman watching. Scott puts it down on him, gets on the inside, and misses the runner. Scurry with the rebound. So Ogman overplaying him, and Scott put the dribble to him. Now inside of a minute and a half left in regulation. Six-point game. Just two Scott threes. But first, they've got to get the ball back from the Rebs. He lost the dribble and tapped it to Hunt. One thirteen, seventeen 17 seconds on that shot clock. They're going to have to put somebody on this line now pretty soon. Ogman! It's fouled by Scott, and Ogman goes down hard. He was... He's so flexible, he almost hit his head on the board and pulled it down underneath. Most people would remember, but Stacy Ogman played, obviously, on our Olympic team, along with Bimbo Coles. The only two guys left, as you talked about earlier. He has been a great international player for America. Played in the World University Games and the World Championship team. You know, Billy, during the regular season, he hit only 66% of his free throws. But coming into this game, he was 14 of 7. He's hit his only free throw. So he's 15 of 18. He's another one of the players who has upped his game in the NCAA tournament. 104 to go. 86-79. Now it's 87-79. Ogman with 22. Nine rebounds. It's Scott. Not there. Brown rebounding it. Dribbles it to three. He's looking for Scott, but Ogman's on him. He can't find him. So they find Oliver. He stepped. He traveled. Big turnover with 45 seconds to go. And now Anderson Hunt telling the crowd in the Rebel corner to celebrate this one. Brown fouling Anthony. And Brown is fouled out of the game. And now the Duke student body, as you see, a very tearful Lois Tarkanian, the wife of that man. 
There, the Duke student body is pointing over at the UNLV student body saying, we want you. And UNLV saying, we'll be there. The three stars for Georgia Tech put in 43 points in the first half and only 24 here in the second half. And UNLV's balanced attack. All five starters, including Stacey Ogman, in double figures. And Moses Scurry off the bench chipped in nine big rebounds and six points. He was a factor as Larry Johnson got into foul trouble and left. So Jerry Tarkanian in his third Final Four is now 44.8 ticks of the clock away from going to his first ever championship game. He had been eliminated previously by North Carolina and then a few years ago in New Orleans by Bob Knight and in Indiana. Missed free throw. Anderson will hurry. Anthony with him. Anderson realizing he's got to get threes, otherwise he would have penetrated on that play. Oliver goes for the two. 30 seconds to go. A quick timeout is called. Down six. Georgia Tech is not about to quit. That's a team that still believes in miracles. We're coming right back. As soon as somebody touches it, though, you foul them. Don't worry about who it is. It'll be Anthony coming to the free throw line. The clock down to 28.8. And Brent, there is there has not been a bigger topic of discussion in the coaches' lobbies than this particular play right now. The intentional foul call. What the, the coaches are really concerned. What are we going to do about the last two minutes of the basketball game? And nobody really has come up with a solution that I've heard that, that everybody likes. What's happening here is within the rules, and so sure. obviously Bobby Crumman's going to try to take advantage of it. Everybody in the gymnasium, including the three refs, know the foul is going to be committed. The agony of Lois Tarkanian as another free throw is missed. 27 seconds. They've got to hurry now. Anderson needs to find Scott. Taking a lot of time. Finally finds him at the top. Ogman out on him. Misfired. Scurry with his 10th rebound of the game. 13 seconds to go. Butler now to hunt. And Butler to finish. He's got it. That'll do it. Yes, sir. A big sigh of relief. Two ladies who have agonized. Mrs. Tarkanian and Mrs. Molesky, who have really supported this program. Good pass and a good job by Hunt here to go for the score because if you pull it back out, they're going to foul you anyway. <laughs> there come the beats. <laughs> almost. I knew they were in there somewhere. That was almost a turnover. Yeah. So a great run by Lethal Weapon 3 is coming to an end. UNLV goes to its first ever NCAA championship game. It'll be Las Vegas against Duke Monday night. 